Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. After seeing yet another dog on yet another flat collar while pulling on the end of the leash in the vet clinic the other day, I did say to that person, hey, you know, the current standard of care is to use a well-fitted harness. I see your dog is pulling and that could be a problem. So let's dive into it. Do harnesses cause pulling? Is a flat collar okay to walk your dog on? Join me, you'll learn something today. When we are teaching our dogs how to walk on a leash, this is actually a learned behavior. They aren't born understanding what we want them to do when they're on a leash. And so we need to teach them, hey, when you are on this, it means I want you to do this behavior, which is walk with the leash loose. So learning how to walk on a leash is quite a challenging behavior because we know that dogs don't generalize very well and we're expecting them to do the same behavior in hundreds of different environments. And it can be very challenging because there can be a lot of very high value distractions in those environments. And it takes a lot of work to teach your dog to walk on a loose leash, but people just expect their dog to magically know what they want and the dog simply does not know and they also don't speak English so we need to use positive reinforcement to show the dog this is the behavior I'm looking for this is what gets reinforced keep doing this and you will get access to the things you want you'll get food reinforces etc it's an incredibly common myth that I hear passed around all the time especially from people who use punishment on their dogs they will say you absolutely must not walk your dog on a harness because it will cause them to pull. We actually have a study that looked at this from 2016 with Granger and all. In this study, the dogs would walk for 20 minutes in either the flat collar or the harness, whatever they were used to using at home. Then they would switch to the other. So if they had been walking in a flat collar, they would walk in a harness and they had them do that at home for a week before coming back and doing another 20 minute walk. The study then looked at the stress levels and amount of pulling that the dogs did and compared them from the flat collar to the harness. The results of the study showed that there was no significant difference in behavior. The dogs didn't pull more in one or the other. They didn't seem more or less stressed in one or the other. A harness does not cause pulling. The next question becomes which is safer or more appropriate for the dog? It's very easy to understand that if a dog has something around their throat and they're pulling that this could cause damage to all of the very important things that dogs have in their necks. They have their trachea, so their breathing pipe. They also have their esophagus, how the food gets from the mouth to the stomach. They also have a number of large veins and arteries that supply oxygen to the brain, which is of course incredibly important. We also know that pressure on the neck can increase pressure in the eyeball. And if you have increased eye pressure, that can also cause a lot of pain and a lot of problems. So there's a 2020 study with Dr. Ann Carter et al that went to try to investigate whether or not the amount of pulling that a dog will do on a flat collar if that's going to be a problem for the dog. So in this study they took seven different types of flat collars as well as a slip lead and they used a model of a neck so that they wouldn't inadvertently cause any harm to an actual dog while testing this theory out. They applied a range of forces. They applied what they would call pulling, which was about 40 newtons of force, then the strong pulling, which was about 70 newtons of force. And they also tested if a human were to jerk on a leash, which is often recommended by punishment type trainers as corrections. So if you have a jerk on the leash, that ended up being roughly 140 newtons of force on the dog neck. The results of the different types of forces and the different types of collars did vary quite a bit from 83 kilopascals to over 800 kilopascals. Both the collar type and the type of force that was applied did matter and did change the amount of force felt on the dog neck. What was interesting is that the amount of force applied did not change the contact area of the collar. That stayed the same whether less force or more force was applied to the leash. The collar type, however, did change the amount of contact. Now, what we can conclude from this 
is that not a single flat collar that was tested resulted in an acceptable amount of force on the dog neck with any type of pressure that was applied. So even kind of a gentle pulling of a dog on a leash with a flat collar risks damage and injury and trauma to that dog. Not a single collar tested with low enough pressures to mitigate the risk of injury for a dog on a leash. This conclusion is incredibly important because it backs up the current standard of care to use a well-fitting harness on your dog. It's not appropriate or okay to walk your dog in a flat collar if there's any chance whatsoever that they might pull. These things are especially important for any dogs that might have breathing issues or that have bulgy eyes um, as those dogs are at even higher risk to injury than other dogs. It's also very important for dogs that might have back or neck problems. If you wish to use a flat collar as a way to have additional identification on your dog, that's one consideration, but you should not be hooking up a leash to a flat collar that risks injury to your dog. The last thing to consider is what a well-fitted harness looks like. At this point, we do want a harness that the dog finds comfortable, so you are going to look for types that have a number of different adjustment points. I am not getting any money from any of these companies. These are not sponsored in any way. I'm just simply trying to give you a starting point for if you're looking for a harness for your own dog. You don't want their leg movement to be impeded by the harness that they're wearing. It can be quite difficult to find a harness that fits well. I have gone through so many different types with my dog. It's also important that you spend the time to work with a research-based positive reinforcement trainer to learn how to teach your dog the skill of walking on a loose leash. This takes time, it takes a lot of consistent effort, it takes a lot of careful planning, but it's very possible to do. It's just something you need to teach. You can't expect your dog to automatically know it. So when I start to teach my dog how to walk on a loose leash, I actually don't use the leash at all. I teach them the concept of moving with me without a leash, and I reward them for being in the location I want them to be within the house, because that's a low, distraction environment, somewhere they're very comfortable, and it's a lot of fun to do this. Then I will start to do this game in the backyard, which is more distracting, but not near as distracting as, say, a street. Then I might do it in the front yard. Then I might do it in a very quiet neighborhood. Then I might do it in a busier neighborhood, and so on and so forth, always making sure to keep her successful and at enough of a distance to distractions that she is able to do the cue that I'm asking her to do. But this takes a lot of deliberate work. I'm not using the leash to keep my dog with me. The leash is a fail safe to keep her safe so that if something happens that I didn't set her up to be successful for or something surprises her, the leash is a fail safe to keep her from getting hit by a car or from getting into something that's dangerous for her. The leash is not what tells her to stay with me. That's the behavior modification and training plan and all of the time I've spent teaching her the behavior that I want. I hope this makes sense and helps to explain to you a little bit so that you can reframe your thinking about loose leash walking. I'll leave a link in the description about how to find a skilled positive reinforcement trainer, if they are wearing a well-fitted harness and they pull, the risk of injury is much less. So that is why current standard of care is to use a well-fitted harness whenever you are walking with your dog. In the comments section, I would love to hear from you about what harness fits your dog the best. As I say, this is something I've been struggling with with my own dog. I have gone through so many different harness types, trying to find one that fits her as good as possible. Or if you have another topic that you'd like me to cover in the future, please comment it down below. I always love to hear from you and I read every comment. Here's this week's comment of the week. Thank you so much for joining me. I do put out a new video most Fridays, so I look forward to seeing you in the next one. <laughs> Bye!